Good morning. Time to make the coffee. Today's flavor is butterscotch caramel. It's only 22 degrees out there. There's a light dusting of snow, but it's going to go up to 40. And then it's supposed to be in the 40s, I think, the rest of the week. So that's fine. I can live with that. Still too cold to garden, but I'll start planting my things indoors. I have all the things I need now, and uh, I'll get things started. I usually like to start my indoor plants in March, so that'll be coming up here in just a few days. So I have so much to do. I've kind of let the house go. I don't know. <laughs> it seems like there's always something screaming for attention. So I'll slowly work my way through the house and get things cleaned up. It's not horrendous, but it needs attention. So if you have places in your house that are an eyesore or that really bother you, start there. Just do a little at a time and you'll get it done. If you let everything overwhelm you, you'll throw up your hands and you won't do anything. You'll become frozen. I know that happens to me sometimes. And then I have to have a little chat with myself and make adjustments. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm not planning on going anywhere. Doggies are taken care of. I'm taken care of. As far as things that we needed. So there's no reason to go out. And it's cold. It is really cold. It's that damp cold that you get sometimes. All right, let me try my coffee. Cheers, my friends. I hope you're having your coffee too or your tea. Pretty good. And then we can spend some time together. I really appreciate all of you visiting with me. I really, really do. And I love when you leave a comment. Actually, even just putting an emoji in the comments, or a thumbs up, or whatever it is you think of my videos, helps the algorithm. And then it sends my videos out into the news feed or suggestion feed, whatever you want to call it. So I appreciate when you guys do that. I know some of you watch me on TV and I watch some of you other YouTubers on TV too. But then what I do is I connect my phone to the TV and it allows me to uh, make comments. So I have one more thing that I have to diagram for my garden outside and what I want to plant out there and I actually really enjoyed that process but it's still way too early to do much of anything other than clean up out there and I already started that to a point and on nice days I'll go out there and spend a half an hour or an hour and do some things so, all right, I'm going to go enjoy my coffee, take a look at my budget book, and uh, <laughs> i got to enter my spendings into my budget book. All right, I will be back in a little bit. Good morning. Cheers again. I thought we'd have some coffee and a little chat. I know this mug looks huge, doesn't it? It's not that big. <laughs> but if you're going to drink coffee, you might as well go huge. Anyway, uh, one of my viewers asked me if it doesn't really matter how often you spend as opposed to how much you spend. 
Well, we all have different reasons for uh, not wanting to spend money and wanting to spend money. Some of us just like to have a lot of money in the bank. Uh, some of us like to have um, the things that we want. Um, some of us just don't like to spend money. Well, when I used to shop a lot, I used to spend a lot of money. And I used to spend it on a lot of things that have now cluttered up my house. So that's one of the things that I want to cut back on. I don't want to keep filling up my house with stuff that, oh, that's so cute. Gnomes. <laughs> Candles. <laughs> Nail polish. All right, so I'm not totally cured. But anyway, um, those things I like. So I'm... I'm you know, I'm going to buy some of those things every now and then. I'm talking about stuff that you thought was really cute and then, you know, you put it somewhere in a bag or in a box or wherever it is you put your, your things. And then you really, it becomes clutter. So personally, I'm trying to cut back on those things. And the way I'm doing that is shopping less. Now that doesn't mean... For me, it means that I have extra money to buy the things that I really want, like my kitchen waste composter or my microwave over there. Those are things that cost more money, and if I were to go out and spend all that money on just random things that really are useless after you initially buy them, um, I wouldn't have the money to buy those things. So that's why I track how often I don't spend money. Because for me, that means money in the bank to buy other things. So I'm not, at my age, I really don't care about accumulating a million dollars or saving for retirement. Um, those things are kind of all in the rearview mirror for me. I either miss the boat or um, I'm already at retirement and I've been retired for a, a number of years. So I want to enjoy my money now, but I don't want to continue to clutter up my house and also not have the money to buy things that I really want to buy. Um, another thing that I really wanted to buy was my car and I couldn't have afforded, even though my car wasn't real expensive by today's standard, I only paid um, like seventeen or 18000 for it, but I wouldn't have had the money for that had I blown all that money on other things. Now I'm paying off the car. I didn't have the cash and I don't care. You know, I mean, sometimes you have to do it that way. I buy a lot of things, same as cash. Um, after I get a couple of cards paid off, I'm going to um, do my windows, same as cash. Some of these companies, they offer, you know, 36 months, same as cash. I bought my washing machine uh, at Home Depot, 12 months, same as cash. Now, if you do that, you have to be very careful that you get everything paid off by that date where they're going to go, Ha! I got ya! I'm going to charge you all this interest now that you thought you weren't going to have to pay. So, I try to spread my payments out. I figure out, okay, I have to pay this much a month in order to uh, accomplish that. So, um... You know, I, and if there is an excess at the end of that 12 months or wh whatever long it is, I pay it off. I make sure I have enough money to just pay it off before that due date. So I never pay minimum payments on things like that. There's really no point to doing it. You might as well just put it on a credit card then. 
So I just wanted to talk a little bit about that, and I know we all have reasons why we don't want to spend money. Um, let me know in the comments below what are some of the things that you want to accomplish by not spending money. Is it just being able to get by every day, um, or is it to save up for some things that you want, a vacation, or, you know, just whatever is important to you? Let me know in the comments below. But anyway, that's how I do it, and I just wanted to clarify a little bit about why I'm tracking how many days I don't spend because that means how many days I don't go to the store, I don't spend money on random things, and I don't go shopping. That's like the other day I was talking about going to Aldi. Uh, they had a really good price on, um, on tofu and some uh, vegetarian meats and, you know, a gnome candle that I wanted. But I've changed my mind, I think. I have a lot of tofu in the refrigerator and the freezer. I really don't need any more. I need to use, start using up what I have. And I really don't need a gnome candle, even though if I did go to Aldi's, I would definitely pick one up if I saw it. Um, and the vegan meats, I just got some from Walmart. Uh, so I really don't need any of those either. I, I have plenty. So I think I'm going to forego the Aldi's trip um, this week and uh, that's the way I, I do things. So um, let me know how some of you spend and save your money. I know we all have different goals and we all have different desires of what we want and what we think is important. All right, I'm going to look at my budget book, and um, we'll see. <laughs> okay, for yesterday, I get a big red X. Well, I had to spend, because I had to get treats for my dogs, and you guys already know that whole story. So, um, it's a big red X, and I'm hoping that the rest of the month I can do the green checks. I can't think of really anything else that, um, that I want, so, um, we'll see how the rest of the month goes. Um, I'm starting to gather some of my garden things, so that's always an expense. And uh, it's something that I want to spend money on. It's not something that I'm just going to randomly go out and, you know, buy a bunch of stuff. Um, unless I see something really epic, I don't need any more garden decor. Um, in fact, I'm downsizing on that. Some of the things have broken, they've gone in the trash. And uh, those are all things that in the uh, fall, in the late fall, I have to find somewhere to store. So I'm just trying to use what I have, and once it wears out, I'm not replacing a lot of garden decor. So um, gardening is always an expense for me because even though I, you know, try to get the cheap Dollar Tree seeds and things, there are other seeds that I buy that I get online that are more expensive that I can't get at the Dollar Tree. And seeds are really get, getting expensive too. It's to the point where, you know, you get less and less seeds in a pack and the price goes up and up. So, but Gardening is always expensive, the initial cost of it, but I enjoy it, and I'm going to continue to do it, even though um, I am trying to consolidate everything. So, anyway, um, that's what I got to, uh, yesterday, and today I'm hoping uh, for a nice green check so I can cut back on my random spending and not just mind, mindlessly buy and buy and buy and clutter up my house. So, okay, I'll be back a little later. All 
right, here's one of the ways I save money. Um, I bought this shelf stable milk at Dollar Tree. Of course, a dollar twenty-five. And I bought this a while back. I think it was from Walmart. I can't remember. I've had it in the fridge for quite a while. And it's whole milk Greek yogurt. So I have like this much left in there. I'm going to eat the rest of it today and then I'm going to use half of it to make some more yogurt because I don't want to go shopping again. Now I do this often even with soy milk but it has to be just soybeans and water. You can't have preservatives in the soy milk or it won't work. But I'm going to use up the shelf stable milk today because I do eat dairy occasionally. So what I'm going to do is just um, put all this in there and my little instant pot here holds four cups and then I'm just going to bring it to the point of not boiling but when you start to see the bubbles all around the perimeter of it then I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to let it sit until it reaches a temperature of um, oh, about 108 degrees around there, give or take. Um, and then I'm going to add half of my yogurt. Like I said, there's this much, but I think you only really need like a quarter cup. But I want to use that up, so that's what I'm going to do. And I have a yogurt setting on here, and I let, I let it... Uh, I let it sit for, oh, about, depends, 8 to 10 hours until it gets to the tartness that I like. Then I let it cool and I stick the whole thing in the fridge and then uh, tomorrow I'll drain it off so that it becomes thicker. So that's how I make my yogurt and like I said, most of the time I do use soy milk, but I, I use dairy as a starter or I use my old soy yogurt as a starter but that was getting old so uh, I didn't want to use it again so alright well that's one of the ways I save money in the kitchen and today I have to do some food prep uh, I have to freeze some things I want to dehydrate some things before they go bad Alright, another thing I want to do this morning, I want to start some sourdough starter. I had some for a long time, but it, I just let it go too long and, you know. So, I have here a quarter cup of just all-purpose flour. And equal amount of just filtered water. You don't want to use chlorinated water. So use bottled water, or if you have a filter on your system, use that. So quarter cup of each. And this is day one. So I'm just going to whisk this up. And I'm just going to let this sit on the counter. And I'm going to feed it again tomorrow. And I'll probably feed it the same amount until it gets nice and bubbly. Now this could take several days because uh, it's cold out, it's, it's not humid, it would go quicker in the summer. But that's it, make sure everything is incorporated, that there's no lumps of flour. And there's so many different ways you can make sourdough starter. And if you keep it fed, even if you um, put it in the fridge after you use it and then keep it fed, it'll last you for years. So, and you can also dehydrate it, you know, as a backup if you need to. Um, so there you go, another project that I'm doing today. Another project that I have to do, I'm going to make some applesauce out of this, but not right this second. The first thing I'm going to do is I have 
bunch of mushrooms here that um, I had in the fridge in this paper bag. And as you can see, if I leave them in there long enough, they will dehydrate. So if you don't have a dehydrator and you want to dehydrate mushrooms, stick them in a paper bag in your fridge. It'll take quite a while, but um, I think I bought these mushrooms like maybe two, three weeks ago. And um, as you can see, they're already starting to dehydrate. So I've dehydrated mushrooms that way a lot. They don't get slimy, they don't get moldy, but you have to put them in a paper bag. But what I'm going to do with these today, I have plenty of dehydrated mushrooms. What I want to do with these today is uh, cut them up smaller and I'm going to boil them because I want to make like a, a, a mushroom gravy because I have some seitan and some sour cream I want to use up and um, I want to make like a mushroom seitan stroganoff. So that's what I'm going to do with these today. So I will wash them just with water. You can do that and then you can actually boil your mushrooms rather than sauteing them all the time. So I'll boil them in some, I have some mushroom bouillon um, that I'm going to boil them in. So all right, um, another project. Okay, I'm going to boil these mushrooms. There's about this much water in here. And I have this, I got this at my local Asian store. It's mushroom broth seasoning. And I'm going to add oh, a good heaping tablespoon anyway. And then I have a tiny bit of soy sauce left in here. I'm going to finish using that up. So I'm going to put that in there too. And I have more soy sauce, so I always, that's one thing I always keep on hand is soy sauce. But I'm going to let these cook for a while and turn it into a broth. And then I'm going to turn it into a gravy later on for, hopefully, for dinner. So, um, I'll be back when these are done cooking. Season it to your taste. Um, you'll have to taste it. So, uh, we'll see. Alright, I have these beautiful Meyer lemons. They came from my little Meyer lemon tree. Now, I can't say that I got them to produce these because, um, they were already on the plant. They were still green when I bought it, but it's still alive. It's up in my plant room, so I'm hoping that as soon as the weather turns nice, it's going back outside. But I want to preserve these because they're getting really, really ripe. So um, I think I'm going to just slice them up and freeze them uh, as opposed to dehydrating them, but I may dehydrate like half of them, I'm not sure. Okay, my mushrooms All right. are boiling. My yogurt is almost ready to go in the pot. And these containers of yogurt are way over $3. <clears throat> and it's going to cost me $1.25 to make a new batch. So that's going to go in there in a minute. And I cut my Meyer lemons up. And I got all these seeds out of there. And I'm going to start some... Meyer lemon trees. I don't know if they'll produce Meyer lemons or I think Meyer lemons are a hybrid. If you know, let me know in the comments below. But they're pretty anyway and they'll produce some sort of lemons. So I've sprouted those before and then uh, one lemon, I froze all the lemons, cut them in half and put them in the freezer. That way I can pull out half a lemon and use it. And then I juiced one, and I took all the membrane out, and I'm just going to put this open in the refrigerator, and it'll dehydrate it. And then I'm going to grind it up for some um, um, lemon uh, rind. So um, they don't have much of a pith, 
and it'll make the refrigerator smell good. And then this is going to go into my composter. All right, let's see. I'm going to make this yogurt now. It's down to about 110 degrees. So I'm just going to scoop all this out. Let me just double check and make sure because you don't want to cook your little good bacteria. And you don't want it too cold either. So between 108 and 110 is good. If it's a little less, that's okay, but you don't want it really above 110. So This is holding steady at 105. So I'm going to go ahead and put my, my yogurt in there. And then I'm going to put it on the yogurt setting. And this is quite a, this is really all you need. But I want to use this up because it's going to go bad. And I might as well use it to make more yogurt. So, and then my container, of course I'm going to use, make holes in it and use for my starts. And it's nice because this one has a clear container, so I can use it as a little greenhouse. So, okay, I'm going to mix this up, turn it on, and easy peasy, and then I'm going to wait till this evening. And uh, hopefully I'll have some nice thick yogurt. Now I do usually strain it further to make it thicker. But that won't be till tomorrow after I get it out of the refrigerator. Okay, so cooking, fermenting, and then you want to put a little loose lid on here. Not tight, but you don't want bugs to get in there. You don't want to leave it just open. So, and I have this right here on the stove where it's nice and warm, so hopefully it'll ferment quicker. But we'll see. All right. On to the applesauce. Okay, my mushrooms are coming along nicely. I just tasted them. They're delicious. I had a blood orange and yogurt and a banana for breakfast. And one of the blood oranges, I bought them on Markdown, one of the blood oranges was past its prime. So what I did was, I well, it went in the composter, but it had these beautiful little seeds in there. And I have sprouted these before, and I'm going to do it again. So I'll sprout some Meyer lemon, and I'll sprout these blood oranges. And I had that little blood orange for actually quite a while, and then one day it was just dead. So I don't know what happened. But anyway, uh, for I think for my dinner tonight, I have this seitan that I got on Markdown. And uh, this is what it looks like. And of course, it's very expensive if you buy it ready-made for this little tiny bit. I can't remember what I paid because it was cheap because it was on markdown. But what I want to do is I want to add the seitan to the mushroom and cook it for a little bit. And then I'm going to add, I have two of these cubes left that I've had for quite a while and I want to use those up and they make brown gravy. So I want to use that and hopefully the sour cream is still good, but if not it'll just be a seitan mushroom gravy thing. Now you could put an onion in with this too, but I didn't. So I'm just going to put this seitan in here. Okay, so here's the seitan. I'm going to put that in here and I'm just going to let that cook a little bit because this is already all cooked, but I want it to pick up the flavor of the mushrooms because I tasted it and on its own it doesn't have much flavor. So Use up what you have, and then uh, when that's cooked for a while, I'm going to end. I'm going to 
and these mushroom or these brown gravy cubes. <laughs> and if I need to thicken it up a little more, I will with some a little bit of cornstarch. So I'm going to let that cook. And you can do the same thing if you have um, pieces of leftover beef. So, okay. I'll be back a little later. Okay, this is ready now for the cubes. And I think I'll probably have to thicken it a little further. Which is okay, it's not a problem. I'll make a, mix up some cornstarch. But this is what they look like. And I got these on Amazon. And they're, they have different flavors. I already used up all the mushroom ones, but I had these two brown gravy cubes. And uh, you can mix one cube with a uh, half a cup of water, and uh, then it'll make just a brown gravy. But Well, this is more than a cup, because I'm going to put two, but it's more than a cup of um, water. So that's why I say I'll probably have to thicken it further with cornstarch, but no biggie. Um, I'm just going to let this cook until it thickens up. And so I've used up my seitan, I used up my mushrooms, I used up the brown gravy cubes. So um, using up what I have. I'm still trying not to buy too much. This month, because of the dogs, I did buy a little bit more. So, but hopefully next month I won't need to get them dog food or treats or anything like that. So I can just stick to the flash food boxes. But I still have plenty of um, produce that I need to use up. So, okay, when this is done, I'm going to cook up some pasta, and I'm going to add some of the sour cream, if it's still good, to taste, and uh, that will be my dinner. All right, the sour cream is perfectly fine. I'm going to add about three heaping tablespoons, but use whatever you like, you know, some people like it maybe a little less, or don't put any sour cream at all in it. But this is a stroganoff, and I think stroganoff too has a little bit of tomato uh, paste in it, but I didn't put any in mine. Um, but you can, if you like. So this is dinner for tonight. And I think that looks delicious. Now you don't want to boil the sour cream. You just want to add it at the end. And I did add some pepper to this, however much you like. I added a little onion powder and some garlic powder. And, you know, like do half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of each. Depends on what you like. All right, let me give this a taste. See if it needs more sour cream. And then this will be enough probably for three meals. I got the uh, mushrooms on markdown, the beef seitan on markdown. Um, sour cream was regular price. But, you know, this was not an expensive meal. Mmm, that's good. I used baby bella mushrooms because it's what I had. But use any mushrooms you like. All right, I'm going to let this cool off. Way too early for dinner. I could eat it for lunch, but I have a little sour cream left that I need to use up. So we'll see. All right. Dinner is...
pretty much done except for the pasta. It's not even noon yet and I got quite a bit done. So in these seeds, these are the lemon seeds, I did rinse them so I'm going to let them, uh, some of them dry. I'm not planting all of these, there's too many. I'm going to pick the biggest ones and uh, I'm going to plant those in, in paper towels. That's what I did the last time I did the uh, blood orange. And I also did a grapefruit that way. And that's growing nicely. It's really getting up there. Eventually I'm going to have to repot that, but that lives under a grow light. Here it is. It came up as twins from one seed. All right. I'm going to go get dressed. And I still have apples that I want to process. I still have some peppers that I want to do something with. But I'm going to get dressed first. All right. I'll be back. Okay, I have my Meyer lemon seeds here. And I have my blood orange seeds here. And I'm trying to decide if I want to use this container or this container. Now, <clears throat> I got this idea. I mean, I've done this before in little plastic bags. But I was watching Robbie and Gary's... I forget the rest of the name of the channel, but they're a gardening channel. And um, Robbie always comes up with these awesome free ideas uh, on how to compost, um, how to set up your garden. She uses totes. She mostly gardens in to totes. So she's always got great ideas. <clears throat> so I think I'm going to try this one first. And if that's too small, because what you can do is layer different seeds and then you put the lid on. So first I'm going to put in the Meyer lemon, and I have quite a few here that, um, that I'm going to try to sprout. So let's do this. I'm going to try and get this in here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet it. So that seems to work okay. Now my other thought was to use this container. She uses uh, pencil boxes, but you know, really any uh, container will do. So if these don't work, then I'll use one of these. But anyway, you don't want to soak it, but you want this to be wet. Okay, I have here just a little pitcher, and I just want to drizzle this with water. You don't want it to be sitting in water, but you definitely want the paper towel to be wet. Because that's what's going to hold the seeds in and cause them to germinate. So you can see all the little seeds in there. And then what I'm going to do, anything that's sort of waterproof, I took that, that um, milk carton that I used for the yogurt and I cut it into strips. So I'm just going to cut this in half, anything that, you know, plastic, anything like that. So there's that. Now I'm going to put the other one on top. And she demonstrated the technique and hers had, had sprouted, but um, I'll, I'll look again and repost after, after a few days after they come up. Now these take longer to come up because they're hard seeds, but mine did 
you know, did sprout up the last time I tried this. But like I said, I did it in a paper bag. So just a little bit more water. The thing is to keep these damp, but not swimming in water. Because you don't want to get mold. And then I'm just going to, this is a waterproof paper. I'm just going to stick that on top. And then I can do more seeds in here, whatever I want. So I'll probably propagate some of the seeds that I want to plant. <laughs> well, maybe that one isn't the best. But anyway, I'm going to put the date on here. And then we'll take a look at this in a few days and see if anything's come up yet. Like I said, these sometimes take quite a long time, up to three weeks. All right. Okay, it's tea time. Time to relax in my chair. I got quite a bit done this morning. Um, I'm not done yet. I still have to do the apples, but... Not today, and I'm not going to do the peppers today either. They'll keep till tomorrow. And all I have to do now is cook the pasta, and I'll have dinner in a little while. So, I used up all those mushrooms. That makes me happy. And if it's too, too, too much, I'll probably freeze some of it. We'll have to wait and see. So, all right, my friends, that's all I have for you today. I want to wish you abundant blessings. I love you guys. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. God bless you. And I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, comment, and like. Thanks for watching.